Our second text for today takes us to the book of Acts, chapter 1, beginning in verse 6. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying. Peter and John James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Amen. Let's pray together. Dear God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. There are three elements that are important to the sermon for today. First is this gift of Luke. Luke, who wrote the gospel according to Luke and the Acts of the Apostles. We started in verse 6, but he speaks to Theophilus again and dedicates himself to telling, telling the story and to telling it with detail. The other gospel writers wouldn't have told you enough about the Mount of Olivet that you could stand there and go to Jerusalem. It's nearby. It's a Sabbath days away. This is where it is. This is how it works. All this detail, because getting it right and being accurate is what's important to Luke. Being clear, making it understandable so that it can be shared, and when it's shared, that it's renewing, that it's that is a message of vitality, that it helps to understand the true gift of God to the world. In our story from Acts, we have the words and the singular action of Jesus. His words that remind us that it is not ours to know all the details. It is not ours to fret about what is to come next and and whether the plans will come to fulfillment because the plans are bigger than us. You need not worry about that. Simply take what you know and take it to Jerusalem, to right outside the doors, to Samaria, maybe the lower peninsula, and to the ends of the earth. It's a big leap in three places, from right outside the door to as far as you can get today to every corner of the world. And I was struck as we shared together in worship today and in prayer today that we heard from Africa and we heard from the Middle East and we heard anticipation of Chicago and we heard 
much, much closer to the ends of the earth than maybe sometimes we think about when we're here together in this place. Finally, the third element is what the disciples chose to do. Go to the ends of the earth, Jesus said, and what they did was go to an upper room and sit together and pray. They gathered together, not just the chosen 11 who remained, but others, others who had joined along the way. They got together and they prayed and they prepared before they sought to live out the call that Jesus gave to them. Actually, the third part of what we have comes from Paul, who we haven't heard from yet today. But I've always appreciated Paul and the way in which Paul forms letters together. They are highly, highly structured, and he has thought through every detail. And while I don't claim to be as eloquent as Paul, that model has inspired me in what we're doing today. One other thing is this Theophilus. That so many of these stickers have lasted this long is miraculous, because I don't think mine lasted five seconds when I first put it on. I'm now taped, and if somebody handed me a pin, I'd pin it too. But why? Who is this Theophilus? Important person to Luke. I dedicate all of this work to you, volume one and volume two. Theophilus translates as lover of God. And whether there was a Theophilus carefully named by his or her parents, we don't know. But it is, it is the substance of a gospel account and an, and an account of the Acts of the Apostles that are sent to us for we too our lovers of God, you and me. Dear Theophilus, while we have been apart, I have heard great things about your continuing service, your powerful fellowship, and your enduring desire to grow in faith together. May you continue to experience abundance in all these things. I am so thankful for your welcome, your encouragement, and your invitation to return and to stay. I have anticipated this time with great joy as the day has approached. I pray that God's gifts among you all are apparent, that you continue to discover and welcome more, and that you encourage and strengthen each other along the way. I ask God to give you clarity of vision built firmly on God's promise of eternal love and grace. May you grow always, each of you, and all of you together, finding hope in what is yet to come, a fulfillment of God's promises given day to day. As the future unfolds in us and around us, let us remember the words of Jesus from Acts. It is not ours to know timing and other details about God's plan. It is ours to lean on the abundance of the Holy Spirit as guide, as strength, as inspiration, as unity for our service to God as witnesses. We are called to step out together, whether just outside our doors or to the far ends of the earth and everywhere in between, like Chicago. No doubt, we need the wisdom of the Spirit to guide us along such a wide path. As our brother in Christ, Robert Deffenbaugh, has said, but God may wish to use methods and means which will not only be more effective, but which will give all the glory to him. 
We cannot therefore take pride in our plans, our program, our obedience. This, as I understand it, is what the sovereignty of God means in practical terms. Embodying the sovereignty of God, those are intimidating words. But they are not ours alone to interpret, so we do not lose hope. We are called together and given an advocate, a guide, an abundant and guiding spirit to sustain and expand our understandings as we are called forward. We are not alone in this, even while Christ will come again one day. The Spirit dwells among us richly. Thank God for those like Luke who seek to equip us with clarity and those like the disciples of Jesus and their early gatherings, providing an example of consistent prayer and deep fellowship. They would rejoice with each other while welcoming those yet to come. May that hope rest deeply within you when we gather together, whether face to face, through the gift of technology, or united by the movings of the Spirit. William Loder tells us that you and I are the place of the promise of the kingdom now. Yet ultimately the kingdom is God's reign, God's effort, God's gift. We are not asked to usurp God, but to share his purpose and by his spirit become his action in the world. Our shared life together in faith is our home, our first witness, our launch pad, our confessional, our classroom, and our sanctuary. As we gather here, we find what we need to step out into the rest of the world in faithful service. Francis of Assisi calls us to preach the gospel at all times and to use words when necessary. A life rhythm of warm hospitality, shared hope, and vigilance for service is the lifeblood of a gathered people. Know that here in this place and take it with you wherever you go. And now may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ free you. May the everlasting love of God fill you. And may the unity and strength of the Holy Spirit inspire you. I ask that you pray for me as I continue to seek and to serve as well. I need wisdom with the resources I have and the plans that God has for me. And rejoice with me at the graduation of my son. Even as you have wept with me for Michigan State, where he will attend in the fall. I send greetings to all in person and online, remembering the search committee and council who have brought us together here today, Lesson Keeley and Paul on their journey, and all of you as you gather to remember Leslie, with special gratitude to Kathy and Grace, who first opened their arms, doors, and hearts to me many years ago. May you continue to grow in faith always, humble in service to our abundant God. Love, Theophilus. Amen. I lift my eyes up to the hills This my morning song Where my strength comes from I lift my eyes up to the hills This my evening song This is the gravity of love Just as the moon follows the sun You're all around me You're holding everything This is the hope of every land Just as the universe expands Your love is reaching
this is the home.